Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tweed and welcome to another sunrise tea session. This morning I'm sharing a tea from one of my favorite local shops, Valley Brook Tea. This is their white comb, which is a type of yancha or wuyi rock oolong, but it's different from other rock oolongs. It is known for being lighter, having a lighter leaf and a lighter infusion and Valley Brook even says that it typically goes for fewer infusions than the uh, wuyi oolongs that you might be used to like shui xian and rogue so i decided to try some in my most recent order from them because i've been buying a little more maybe than i should because i want to support the shop while they have to be closed because dc is under a uh, stay-at-home order just like Maryland is so I thought I'd give it a try and I'd share it with you this morning so I hope everyone's staying at home or quarantine or whatever you want to call it is going well and let's brew so I'm using a very simple brewing setup this morning just a porcelain teapot which I have pre-warmed with some hot water which I'll pour out into my teacup and a teacup I'm using water that I've boiled in my kettle and put in my travel flask to keep warm. So it might be a little under boiling, but ideally you would steep this with boiling water. So the nice thing about Valley Brooks teas is they come in these little seven to eight gram single serving pouches, which is the perfect size for my little five ounce teapot from Bitterleaf Teas. So I'm gonna open it up. and pour it into the pot. And I'm gonna pour a little bit into my hand to take a look. And yeah, you can see already that it is brown, but it's definitely a lighter brown. And it's got a bit of a green and a golden hue to it. So we'll try to get that into our teapot as best as we can. And then when I go to the shop, Yunshan never rinses the tea. He simply pours out the first infusion. And I think this is pretty typical with Wuyi teas. So I'm gonna pour out my rinse water. Have some escaping leaves. And one of the things you would have noticed when I showed you the leaves is that they're very large, intact leaves. And that is one of the signs of a high quality tea, particularly from Wuyi. So we'll pour our boiling water in. Try to get all the tea leaves as wet as possible. And then this doesn't take long to steep at all. So just pour it right out. And it has a beautiful color already, but you can see that it's not nearly as dark as something like a Da Hong Pao or Rogue would be on the first infusion. So let's give it a taste. So first I'm going to give my leaves a smell. Ooh. Yeah, the wet leaves have a very herbal smell to them. You can definitely smell the rose. My nose is running because it's a little chilly this morning. But it definitely doesn't smell as rich or sweet as the typical Wu Yu Oolongs that I'm used to. This is really interesting. It almost smells like red raspberry leaves or like mugwort. So it's got that very herbal scent to it. So we've got our infusion. Ooh, it's got a very juicy mouthfeel. It almost has like a brightness or a tartness to it. But the mouthfeel has that kind of slippery mineral taste. So you do get that rock taste. Mm. Yeah, that does taste herbal. It's very smooth and balanced, a little bright a little minerally. It's got kind of a slippery, juicy mouthfeel. 
Mm. Oh, this is, this is exactly what I needed this morning. I don't know how everybody else has been doing, but I've definitely been having a little trouble during our stay at home order. We've actually been staying at home and working from home and keeping Ellie at home for five weeks now. I guess we've been under an official stay at home order for two or three weeks. Um, the weeks have kind of blurred together. So getting out for these little moments outside by myself before most of the neighborhood has woken up are just really necessary. It's not just nice anymore, it's really necessary. Oh, this is, I'm getting some, I'm getting some aromatic, like a florally. It's kind of developing into this floral thing. It's kind of a non nondescript, indistinct florality. But it's got a really nice body to it. It's got a really nice mouth feel and just like heft in the mouth. This is beautiful. So why don't we try a second infusion when I finish this cup? So now I've finished my first cup and it is time for a second infusion. Even just as I pour the hot water on it, I'm getting that really greeny, herbally aroma from the leaves. And you'll probably notice that I'm using this porcelain pot and not my usual chaojo pot that I use for yanshas. And that is because I wanted to try this in a neutral material first because it is supposed to be so different from other yanchas. So I think it's, if you have something that you want to actually get a sense of, it is a good idea to try it in something like porcelain or glass or something that doesn't hold on to flavors first. And then you can try it in your clay. If you just want to have a nice tea session, then uh, by all means, drink it in whatever you want to drink it out of. Maybe a slightly darker color. Mm. Get a little bit of sweetness off the liquor aroma. Oh, interesting. The roast comes through a little more on this steeping. This is going to be one of those really fascinating teas that actually develops strongly or noticeably or intensely over the course of several seasons of love that. It reminds me of when I first went whiskey tasting, scotch whiskey, and I was coming up to my 30th birthday and I decided that by the time I turned 30 I should know what kind of scotch whiskey I like. So I had a colleague of mine who was a bit of a whiskey aficionado take me to a bar downtown that is known for their whiskey selection and just kind of helped me pick out a few to try and of course because he would be drinking as well as I that we could try twice the number of scotches without having you know five shots of liquor which would be very much too much for me even though for the course of an evening out and one of the whiskeys that I tried was the Lefroy 18 year old uh, Isla Scotch Whiskey, which is a fantastic whiskey and I'm very sad that I tried it before I tried the 10 year old because I can't stand the younger one, which is more in my price range than the 18 year old. As I was sitting there sipping this whiskey, it was one of the later ones that I tried so I didn't drink it very quickly. I sipped on it and I let it sit for a bit and then I sipped on it again and at one point the flavor changed and just got so sweet and buttery and vanilla-y and it tasted like cake. And it just was because this whiskey had developed as it was out in the air, as my taste buds adjusted to it and 
like all things that you taste and all things that have flavor, they interact with their environment. And tea can be very much the same way, particularly if you're doing multiple infusions. You're really getting this kind of time dependent snapshot of the tea. And I think this is going to be a tea. It doesn't taste like cake yet, but it definitely has a bit more of a richer, roasted, more typically we oolong flavor to it. <clears throat> mouthfeel is still wonderful. It doesn't have quite as much of that initial brightness that I noticed. It's not quite as herbal tasting. But it does still have that little undertone of maybe something like a red raspberry leaf. Um, maybe ever so slightly nettle. Um, I know some people really like nettle infusion. I do not and I really like this tea, so I'm hesitant to say I taste nettle on it. But if I'm being totally honest, maybe I do. It's that very deep green flavor. So now I've finished my second infusion. I think it's time for a third steeping. I think I still have enough water. leaves have opened up they're quite green kind of an olive green and almost I hesitate to say this because I know that Yun Shan is not a pu'er fan but they almost look like a shang pu'er doesn't taste at all like a shang pu'er it doesn't have that kind of citrusy hoppy intensity that I get from most shang pu'ers That is still just as rich a color. So whatever he means by it doesn't go for as many infusions, it certainly goes for at least three because I'm still flash steeping that. Love this little seating area. I don't film here normally. Ooh, the brightness is back. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, and I get a little, maybe tiny, tiny bit of vanilla. Mm. There's almost a creaminess to it, like, um, like a high mountain oolong. Oh, that's delightful. So I was saying, I don't normally film in this spot usually. You might be wondering, you know, if I have this lovely little tea spot to sit at, outside why don't I film here all the time instead of sitting on the ground and getting attacked by angry squirrels from above and it's because our landlady during part of the year lives in a an apartment in the basement of our house and this is right next to her front door and of course she's not here right now because she normally lives in Italy and so far she's doing okay we check in with her every so often, but of course she's not going to be able to come back to the house for a while. So I wanna make sure that her little areas get plenty of love because I imagine she would be out here having a drink in the evenings like Italians like to do uh, on a regular basis now that the weather is beautiful. So I thought I'd have a little tea, sit here with one of our beautiful cypress trees. I will say the cypress trees were Part of what initially kind of drew me to this house when we were looking at houses and this is just such a lovely little place to sit there are quite a few weeds um i won't lie i've been eyeing many of the weeds that grow in our yard wondering if we're going to be having some foraged salads if our grocery store becomes a little bare because i'm hearing such dire things about the produce harvest but that's okay because we have this lovely patch of chickweed here, which is a bit of a delightful green to eat. It's got a bit of a tart, juicy flavor to it. And of course, dandelions are everywhere. And I actually love dandelion greens. Dandelion greens and sausage are 
just absolutely delicious. The richness of the sausage, particularly if it's like a maple breakfast sausage with a tiny bit of sweetness to it, kind of cuts through the bitterness of those greens and the bitterness at the same time helps lighten the oiliness of the sausage. So perhaps I will be digging up all of our dandelions simply to have some breakfast greens. It's not for nothing that I say that I'm a witch. Oh, this is a wonderful tea. It must have a little bit of energy to it. I don't think it's just that I'm happy that I've had my tea now. I just, it's been a couple of days. It's been a couple of days. I'm filming this the morning that I will post it later today. So after I have my tea, I'm going to go in and try and figure out some time to frantically edit this together. because I didn't film all week other than my baking video and I didn't film yesterday and I didn't feel well yesterday afternoon and now I finally have some time to film and it's the day of and I did not feel like waking up this morning I especially did not feel like waking up at 6 30 in the morning when the sun came up and now that I'm out here and I've had this beautiful tea which I will be buying more of so Yunshan, if you're watching this, there will be orders. There will be orders in the near future. I need to check my stash, see what needs to be sipped down. But this is unlike anything else I have in my stash right now. Oh, yeah, I just, I feel so much better. It is amazing what a nice cup of tea can do. So. This has been three steepings of the white comb from Valley Brook Tea in Washington, D.C. I will, of course, include links below so that you can go and patronize this wonderful tea shop so that they stay in business while everybody is staying at home. And I hope you enjoyed this tea tasting video. And I hope I see you again sometime. Thank you for joining me. Bye.